broke the Covenant of the Keys. The season three finale, I believe in the whole series, was the only finale that ended with a cliffhanger. I think. I mean, you can kind of make an argument at the end of um, season seven that was kind of a cliffhanger because the beginning of season eight, the first episode, was kind of like a fallout. But to me, it wasn't really a cliffhanger because we knew Susan had died. Um, in this, of course, you know, Kramer had moved out to California to become an actor. Uh, but of course, the suspense of, you know, the status of him and Jerry's friendship, though, was still up in the air, of course, it sounded like. A uh, very good episode, though. A very good finale uh, for Season 3, uh, which we got through pretty quickly on this channel compared to how we did for um, Seasons 1 and 2. So, the keys. Uh, the episode starts off with uh, three scenes in which Kramer is just coming into Jerry's apartment whenever he wants, and he's just, it's just always in the way. Just bad timing. The first time was when Jerry got up to get something to drink in the middle of the night, and he got free ducks and doors open, and it was Kramer who came in to um, to get his popcorn popper to pop some popcorn, uh, which, of course, he scares Jerry. Then the second one, Jerry's coming home from, I guess, a business meeting or something. He seemed like he was pretty dressed up, and he had to go to the bathroom really bad. Uh, but he goes open up the door, and Kramer's in his bathtub taking a bubble bath. And he kicks Kramer out there. Of course, Kramer also was using his towel. And finally, the third straw came when um, Jerry was coming back from a date with a woman to, you know, probably get it on. Um, and, you know, they, they were flirting. They seemed to be having a good time and enjoy his company. They're about to get started. And then out comes Kramer and his girlfriend dancing, and Kramer's show is all ripped up. So I'm pretty sure they were fooled around in Jerry's bed. Um, and this is where Jerry drew the final straw and had told Kramer to give him his keys back. Because um, Kramer had Jerry's spare keys. Um, and um, Kramer was begging him to give him another chance. They goes, no, you've had plenty of chances. Then they start arguing. They're wrestling over keys. And then finally, Jerry yanks the keys out of Kramer's hands. And Kramer falls back and knocks some tapes off of his uh, shelf. And he even knocks over his own girlfriend. And I think he even bumped into Jerry's girlfriend on the way out. But he just storms out until he comes back to get his girlfriend, who stayed there. Um, so then Jerry gives his spare keys. This is where a bunch of like confusion starts happening with their with spare keys. So it was like a domino effect. So Jerry gives his spare keys to Elaine, um, and um, Elaine's asking if Kramer's upset, and, Kramer, and Jerry says, yeah, he's acting a little weird lately. He says, maybe we should give the keys back. No, I can't. Of course, instead of just sliding into the apartment, Kramer knocks at the door and for Jerry to let him in, and um, you know Elaine was then begging Jerry to give Kramer back his keys, and then Kramer starts saying some like, very you know weird, weird talk. Like He sounded like a philosopher or something. Jerry finally knows that, that Kramer's hurting. Just can, tries to give back the keys. Says, no, I don't want the keys back. They argued about that. Finally, Jerry's like, whatever. And then Kramer was like, okay, but more thing though, I would like my keys back. So Jerry gives Kramer his spare keys, which was like a bunch of them. He then goes down to the coffee shop and meets up with George. And he basically wants to become key brothers with George now. Which George says, you know, I could, I'll do this, but Elaine has my keys, so I will um, get them off of him and give them to you. Um, and then Kramer starts saying stuff about how having Jerry's keys like kept him in like a fantasy world, like a world that wasn't his. Then he starts crapping on George, saying that you know he doesn't want to live like a bum like George anymore. And of course, he does like the thing with you know how George is wasting his life, and he goes like, like what, like what? Do you have a job? No. Do you have uh, any money? No. You got a woman? No. Do you have any prospects? No. You have anything on the horizon? Um, no. You have any action at all? No. You have any conceivable reason for even getting up in the morning? I like to get the daily news. And then Kramer's like, it's time for us to grow up. Um, and do something with our lives. Kramer then tells George he's going to California. He's had the acting bug since being that Woody Allen movie, which George is like, you're crazy? You had one line, these pretzels are making me thirsty, and you were fired. And then Kramer goes, I know, but man, I never felt so alive. I'm like, you barely had anything to do. Then he asked George to come with him. He said no. So then he leaves. Um, so then George stops by Elaine's and says he wants his keys back um, because um, 
because Kramer wants to be key brothers. And then Elaine's like, why should that be the case? Why can't? You, why do you have to have each other's keys? So then Elaine says, I'll give you back your keys, but I want, I want, I want mine back. And then they get into the same argument there. Uh, finally, after clearing that up, Elaine said she'll get. Well, George said he'll get. He'll take. Get, he wants his his keys back, but he says he'll get his. Um, he um, he'll get Elaine's keys. You know, next time. Uh, and then as Elaine's walking away, George sees this like stack of paper on Elaine's counter, but Elaine pulled away saying, you're not going to look at that. Um, and then, then the next scene, Jerry, um, I guess, seemed like he was concerned he hadn't seen Kramer for, for a few days. So he, or hadn't seen Kramer at all. So he asked George to bring in Kramer's spare keys to go to his apartment, which of course George doesn't feel right about because, you know, Jerry took Kramer's spare keys away from him and now he's invading his privacy. Goes to his apartment, no one answers, he opens unlock the door, it's dark. Newman comes around the corner and basically like makes it obvious he knows something, but then Jerry starts arguing he wants to know what happened to Kramer. Until Elaine shows up and then Newman uses uh, Elaine as a shield, he's thinking that Jerry's about to beat him up, and it's like, stop it. And then Kramer, I mean, Newman finally says that Kramer was ticked off about the keys, um, and then he, um, he packed up and he's heading out to L.A., which of course George knew, but he didn't want to admit it, admit it yet. But then Kramer, unfortunately, has some serious unfortunate events happen on his way out to L.A. His car breaks down. Then he um, he hitches a ride on a, on a motorcyclist, who the actor's last name actually was Kramer, for that motorcyclist. He then rides in a truck, in the back of a truck with a bunch of hillbillies for a little bit, um, who actually do appear in the first, the first episode, or even, maybe the first two. Well, maybe this is the second episode, because they showed uh, what happened on the previous episode, since it was a two-parter. Um, but the hillbillies, and he, as he was telling the story of the keys, um, and um, and then of course he also got a ride with another woman in a semi, and then the last time we seen him before was the ending scene. He was riding on roller skates, which he was probably like you know about to arrive in L.A. by then. Um, meanwhile, back at home, first Jerry tries to call Kramer's mom to see you know what what happened with um with um if she heard anything about Kramer. Of course, we can call it, she's drunk out of her mind. Um, and then Jerry, like one of the next days, goes back to his apartment, returns home, realizes he le- he forgot to grab it, he forgot his keys. Um, so he goes down to the coffee shop and tries to call Elaine, who has his keys, um, and she didn't answer. So that he, after patient, he wasn't you know he was he went way long enough. He calls George to to see he has Elaine's keys to go to let him in Elaine's apartment for him to find his. Which, of course, George didn't feel right. Of course, they start arguing at the coffee shop. So they go to Elaine's apartment. Elaine was not there. Um, they start looking around. They can't find the keys. Finally, they come across that stack of papers that George had seen the other day. And it was a Murphy Brown script. Elaine was trying to write her own Murphy Brown script. And then Elaine came in and got upset. And they all got into a big fiasco. And um, Elaine gave Jerry her key, his keys. And basically, they, and Elaine wanted her keys back because they can't be trusted. So they're like, I don't want you to hold my keys, I don't want you to hold my keys, and they realize, oh crap, we don't have the wrong keys, and they were just arguing again over that. So it was just a big, big fiasco. So in the ending scene, um, um, Jerry um, and Elaine are sitting on the couch watching Murphy Brown. And um, Elaine was like, she thought she, that she could write a Murphy Brown, and then Jerry starts telling Elaine that show business, of course, is it, challenging, you gotta like, study the show, and this, this, and that. She's like, okay, can I just watch the show? Now, and then Elaine mumbles something. Now, there was three times in this episode where there was, like, a mumble, and then Jerry didn't know what they were, what they were saying. But he said, no, I didn't say anything. He goes, I heard something, though. Well, believe it or not, the first time, which was after um, they found out that, that Kramer left for L.A., Jerry was like, Elaine, you saw, you saw me. I tried to give him the keys back, but he wouldn't take them. And Elaine said, you know, yeah, I saw it. But then she mumbles to herself. Apparently, what she said was, I mean, it was complete bullshit, but I saw it. And when George and Jerry were going into Elaine's apartment, um, Jerry was going on his long explanation about how he should be the one with Elaine's keys anyways. George says, you're right, how'd I miss that? And he mumbles, maybe because it's a cr- crock of shit. And then whenever Jerry was going on about show business, and, he's, and Elaine's like, can I just watch the show? She just goes, oh God, what an asshole. And then of course they're like, I didn't say anything. He's like, I heard something. Um, but then... Um, the show ends, and it was the big focal point of the inside look for this episode. They're watching Murphy Brown, and Kramer happened to be on Murphy Brown, playing Murphy Brown's secretary named Stephen Snell. Now, um, the idea, of course, of the whole show, again, was Kramer 
were moving out to LA to become an actor, and they said, "What we actually like showed him on an actual show, uh, and actually seen the show, like a like a real let's like show." And they picked Murphy Brown because at the time Murphy Brown was the thing where she had like, had like, had like a new secretary like every episode, so they thought that they would have Kramer casted as that character. Of course, NBC wanted more of an NBC based show, but they're able to work something out with Murphy Brown for that all to happen. And of course, they also talk about how like you know they were impressed with the Murphy Brown set and how like you know geez you know the show was definitely really picking up and had a very successful third season. Well, season, we get to season four, which is known as the breakthrough season. Um, they were just like, oh my goodness, like, you know, like, compared to, you know, compared to us, like, we're nothing compared to this set, basically. Um, which I think they also followed up, because in the the look, there's an ending scene showing Larry and Jerry going through scripts, which actually was to, you know, to re repay them for them letting them use Murphy Brown. They appeared on one of their shows, and, and, uh, of them going through scripts, and then, um, Jerry and Larry come across a script written by Andrew Barton or something like that saying of the idea of Kramer sleeping with Elaine. Which they never actually had happened, but of course they had there was an episode actually in season four, in one of the two parts at the beginning of the series, they actually had uh, Elaine having to lie to her uh, psychiatrist and say that um that um they um that she was sleeping with Kramer, so I guess I kinda of rolled with that instead. But um but yeah, of course, um, apparently Murphy Brown always fired her secretaries, but for Kramer, a.k.a. Stephen Snell, they she said, Stephen Snell, I know people, and I got a very good feeling about you. Although Kramer was just like, just like, just like, recklessly typing on a keyboard, obviously, just had, like, you know, no clue. Like, obviously, he was playing the role as in, like, he was, as in Kramer being a bad actor, not Michael Richards or, or whatnot. But, um, yeah, so Kramer goes out to L.A., but... Will him and Jerry ever make up as he definitely, you know, took it hard when Jerry took his keys away from him. He broke the covenant of the keys, he says. And then he tries to make George's keeper, then he just takes off for L.A. So what's going to happen? Like I said, this is, I think this is probably the only cliffhanger in the entire series. Like, season four was the first one that had, like, of like, like a storyline arc, but most of the scenes that had, like, like, a season arc to them, um... They seem to, you know, like, that story seemed to end at the end of the season. Um, there really wasn't, like, many other, like, cliffhangers. Like, the only one I feel like you could make an argument for was the end of season six, when Susan dies, and then at the beginning of season one, you know, they, it's Susan's burial, and then they start that Susan Ross Foundation. But to me, it's like, that's not quite much, so much of a cliffhanger, more so just, like, Follow up from how the previous season ended, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I, I I would say this is probably the only cliffhanger. It was a pretty good cliffhanger, um, and that's it for season three. Good season, like there was a lot of episodes I enjoyed in this season. There's a lot of them, such as the note, um, the library, um, the tape, the parking garage. Um, we had episodes like The Red Dot, The Suicide, um, uh, The Boyfriend, um, The Fix Up, The Good Samaritan, and even The Keys. Like I said, a lot of really good episodes. And Season 4 will have a lot of good episodes as well. It actually includes, in my opinion, even though I don't understand why, my favorite episode in the whole entire series is actually in Season 4. It's not the contest, though, which, that's, is that season four? Yeah, that is in season four, I believe the contest is, which is the best episode in the series, I agree, but my favorite is actually a different episode in this series, uh, which is a random one, but you'd be surprised. For some reason, I don't know why, it's just my favorite. But that's it for season three, guys, of my Seinfeld reviews. We're going pretty good. I'll see you guys in season four, uh, which we start off with a couple two-part episodes. The first one, I've heard some people say, a lot of people consider the first two-part episode probably the worst in the series. It was a good episode, in my opinion, but I can understand why people thought it would be the worst, because it probably was one of the least funny episodes uh, in the whole series. But um, that'll be next time when we, um, when we follow up on... Um, on Kramer moving out to L.A., um, does Jerry and Kramer ever make up? Um, 
And also, Elaine's not going to be in the first two episodes of this um, of the of season four, as Julia Louis Dreyfus did go on maternity leave. And of course, towards the end of the series, they had to have like a lot of like like objects like put in front of her to hide her pregnancy, as she was pregnant with her child uh, Henry. Um, so we'll see how what all goes down in season four, guys. Again, the breakthrough season of Seinfeld. So what are your thoughts, guys, on the keys? What are your thoughts on Season 3? you have any other thoughts to give, of course, your thoughts down in the comment section below. And be sure, as always, to slap a like on the video. Subscribe for more content on my channel. And follow me on Twitter at DemandAirBoy93. Make sure, also, you guys do not break the covenant of the keys. So, guys, I'm checking it out. See you guys in Season 4. Another good season ahead of us. Peace out, everybody.